Dude, I can't even count to 51. How do I know I'm not being taken for a ride? Clubhouse Games 51 Classics is a simplistic party title that's all about playing your favorite table toppers. This game is a cheaper purchase on the eShop, and because of that, it underwhelms in a few areas, but that doesn't mean Clubhouse 51 is a bad game by any means whatsoever. And after playing this game for the week, I have some things I want to say about it. I go by capture reviews, and these are my thoughts on Clubhouse Games 51 Classics. And since this game has no story, fear not, there are no spoilers whatsoever. In Clubhouse Games, if you couldn't tell by the title, there's 51 games for you to enjoy or f***ing despise. Most of these are tabletop games that use cards or dice such as Texas Hold'em, Mahjong, Solitaire, and even royalty-free, please don't sue us Yahtzee for the love of God, Yacht Dice. With this, there are also some lesser known games that some of you might be experiencing for the first time. Like for me, I had only heard of Hanafuda because of Nintendo's history, but now I still don't know what it is. Now, I won't be covering every last game because because I do have a life. Wish that wasn't so funny. And most of these are tabletop games, so there isn't much to discuss. However, the sporty ones or the ones that are more physics-based definitely warrant a closer look, so let's review some games. Oh my god, I'm reviewing games inside of a game. This is... This is like a shittier version of Inception. In golf, you're given three different clubs and can play across nine unique holes all while battling the wind and trying to get the lowest score. And yep. That's, that's all there is to it. Golf is actually one of my favorite games in this collection, but it lacks a lot of depth, which is a sadly recurring theme in Clubhouse 51. For starters, the fact that you can only use three clubs is a letdown, and the greens and courses as a whole have no sloping or hills to worry about. Changing either one of those things would have made this particular game infinitely better, with there being more strategy involved instead of just reading the wind and gauging your power. There's also only nine holes to choose from, and while you can randomize their order, Order, it would have been nice to have a full 18 to mess around in. And what's even worse is that putting is absolutely pointless. You can only undershoot your putts, but if you wail on that putter from two feet out, you won't be penalized at all. So basically, once you're on the green, you're home free and there's nothing to worry about. Still, there is a minor amount of strategy, and the physics behind the wind and the way the ball rolls and hits the flagpole is the perfect balance between cartoony and realistic. Here we go. HA! Fuck. It just isn't what it could be, which is pretty disappointing. Darts is by far one of the best games in this collection. Much like the bowling minigame, darts can be played with either touchscreen controls or motion controls. But you know what? I don't like the motion controls because they never seem to work and I always end up sucking and I just don't know why. Oh, maybe I'm the problem. In all seriousness, the motion controls are great, and the concept of holding the Joy-Con on its side like you would an actual dart is phenomenal and very fluid. The only downside here is the fact that there are some dart games like Cricket that aren't present. But hey, it's still a great multiplayer game mode, and I love playing this one with all of my friends. Dude, it's not, it's not that funny. Backgammon is one of the many games in this collection that allows you to choose your opponent's difficulty, which is a very nice thing. The only issue is that you have to unlock those higher difficulties by beating the easier ones, so there's definitely going to be some slower, boring games that you'll have to get through first. However, like most of the table games in this collection, Backgammon does its job and there's not much else to say besides VICTORY IS MINE, YOU FIEND! My main issue with Yahtzee- <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yacht Dice, besides its stupid name, is its stupid scoring table. In actual Yahtzee, rolls like a full house net you a standard number of points. But in Yacht Dice, it's determined by what you roll, which is kind of a bummer. Sure, it does bring extra strategy and risk into the game because you have to be more careful about what you choose to score, but with things that are as rare as full houses, I'd rather be rewarded than potentially punished. Oh, also you can't actually roll the dice with the Joy-Con even though you can shake the cup. You just have to hit stupid buttons and my life is a lie! Blackjack is... Well, 
Blackjack. It gets the job done and I have no real qualms with it whatsoever. Hit me motherfucker! Damn it! Billiards in this game is literally the exact same game that you can play on your iPhone. And just like the iPhone game, I suck at this too! Great! Seriously though, there's very little skill involved other than just gauging your power. The game tells you where the ball will end up and that's all you really need to worry about. This one does come with a few extra game modes at the very least, so that's a plus, but honestly, it's the same thing you can play on your phones with fancier graphics. Toy Tennis is one of the few toy-based games in this collection, joining the ranks of un believably difficult soccer, skill-based curling, what the f is this boxing, and annoying as all hell baseball. Tennis is probably the most sane and playable out of the bunch. Your character is forced to move in a set pathway the game has laid out for you, and you can swing your toy racket left or right. With this, depending on when you hit the ball and your positioning, you'll either lob one up or slam one past your opponent. Easy, fun, and the cheering fans are adorable, this one gets a yes from me. Oh, there's also a piano that you can play. What the hell am I doing with my life? In summary, Clubhouse Games 51 Classics gets the job done, but underwhelms in a few areas. A fair portion of these games are controlled using your standard Joy-Cons, motion controls, or even touchscreen controls at times. I love the variety here, and the games that allow for motion or touchscreen controls are very well done and thought out. I've never felt more control than when I'm bowling and throwing such a shit curve on my ball, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened there. I do have to say though, I don't like that in multiplayer mode, you have to use one Joy-Con each. It makes sense given how much you'll be switching control styles, but I just wish we had more freedom. Visually, Clubhouse 51 really makes a splash when it comes to its graphics. Okay, now it's just borderline bullying. Please stop. Everything about this game from the menu, the fonts used, to the actual minigames themselves just ooze personality and charm. Games like Toy Baseball and Golf are delightfully cartoony, and others like Yacht Dice and Blackjack are very detailed and realistic. The little flares and animations each game mode has really screams out Wii Sports to me, and I actually really appreciate that. It feels like Clubhouse was inspired by Wii Sports and Wii Play, but wasn't directly copying them. The music in Clubhouse games gets an A plus on its own. The smooth, almost jazzy sound you hear on the main menu is very comforting and really nails the whole tabletop theme of the game. And each individual game has its own beautiful song. Like, take golf for instance. Or an even better example is the song for darts. The visuals and music for this game really help cover up its flaws, but it doesn't exactly fix them entirely. But I will say that this game uses HD rumble like no other. The littlest details like the haptic clicks when scrolling through the menu are very much welcome. And feeling the dice in my Yahtzee- <laughs> God, I'm so sorry again. Yacht Dice Cup is very amusing, and hitting a curveball right into the f***ing infielder has never been more satisfying. So that's nice at least. So, is Clubhouse Games 51 Classics worth buying? Yes, but only if you buy it knowing that it's a fairly basic game and has way too long of a title. Clubhouse Games is a nice collection of some of the world's most famous tabletop games and some far lesser known ones. The ability to take a backgammon game anywhere I want or being able to challenge my friends don't to a hysterical match of toy soccer is just great. But like I said before, there are just the tiniest things Clubhouse Games misses the mark on that make a bigger impact than you would think. The majority of these card games or board games are very easy to program and design, which makes me wonder why more effort wasn't put into the other, more complex games like golf, tanks, or even darts. This game is only $39.99, but with how simple the tabletop games are, are, it seems like they cut some corners here. So with all of this in mind, I give Clubhouse Games a respectable 7.5 out of 10. It's a pretty well made board game collection with great visuals and a solid soundtrack, but it loses me with its mediocre sports game subset. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my thoughts on Clubhouse Games 51 Classics. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.